this is the latest HP G8, which I think many people will decide for, especially if they want a fast and furious processor at affordable price in the mid-range territory. It is significantly more stylish than the G7 generation, which I estimated a few months ago, and the key difference is the new bezel and chassis design. Inside we have Intel processors that finally catch Ryzen in some tests. Or is this just one of rumors spreading by one robot with a lot of time in its hands? Otherwise HP has 14 and almost 16 inch version of this laptop loaded with Ryzen and Intel processors. In this review I will focus on the i5 version, which is the more versatile processor for home and office and has enough power for editing and gaming. Compared to the Ryzen processors, the i5 is not far behind and its some apps actually still performs better than Ryzen. The chassis of HP G8 has been improved with some major changes. The biggest change is improved heat pipes and cooler. Now it's a lot more effective than on 7th generation. There is also the new thermal block. And there is more too, including a lot of improved features, which I will show you. But first, I will start with the exterior. The sides of laptop are smooth and gives you the specter of artistic finish. I think it looks okay. On the left side of the notebook we have one USB, Ethernet and lock port. The minimalism continues on the other side, so we have access to the card reader, headphone and microphone input, and on the right we can see HDMI, two USB-A, one USB-C and charger port. If you wonder where other ports are, well, they are on the same path like optical drive. This legendary technology is sadly destined for oblivion. In general, the housing is well made and there is no visible deviations. Compared to other premium laptops, at first glance it looks the same. It has metal lid and cable deck, but let's not forget that the inner bezel is still covered with plastic, which is more sensitive to the color fade over time. Otherwise, it's thoroughly built. During test pressure applied to the bezels and deck, it was without any creak sounds. Here you can see hidden vents below the screen and inside we have only one fan to remove heat from the processors, in combination with heat pipes and vapor chambers. Now, when I first opened this laptop, one of the first things I noticed is that there is less space around buttons, but the cable still feels nice, it's responsive and offers a good typing experience. Despite the smaller chassis and the thinner design than its predecessor had, it's commendable that we still have a numeric keypad and the chiclet button mechanism provides a quick response. The touchpad is large enough and has well arranged left and right click buttons, although they could be better marked. The IPS screen has full HD resolution and offers at first glance more colors than the last generation. On the top we have high definition camera with mic that provides clear image and sound, which has good quality for zoom or similar video apps. The semi-glass 15.6 inch IPS screen covers less than 55% of color gamut and it has above average brightness. According to the light meter test, it can achieve around 250 nits, which is more than enough for comfortable use in dimly lit room, but if you want to work in the park, then you will need to find a nice spot in the shade. Expectly, the 1080p screen resolution is sharp enough and viewing angles are much better than on cheaper TN screen versions. So, it looks like the build quality in general is ok and there is no visible deviations when pressing the case around the keyboard, at least if you don't have hook powers. At first glance it looks like it's made entirely of metal, but there are still some parts that are covered with plastic. 
which otherwise has a nice final look. All this leaves an impression that it could be durable. The one thing you will notice at night is elegant white illumination of keyboard. The lighting is really subtle, so it's much easier on the eyes in the dimly lit room. The processor and graphics are powerful enough that you can easily run all Office programs including Adobe apps like Photoshop or Premiere, but for larger projects I would still suggest at least 16 gigs of RAM. While testing the games I noticed the benefits of the new Iris graphics, which is even powerful enough for some first-person shooters like Legends of Apex, but if you want to play Cyberpunk. Then I would still suggest a gaming laptop with at least GeForce 360 graphic cards. All these apps and games will of course raise the temperature, mostly if you are a passionate gamer, but I didn't find it distracting while typing. So let's see more closely what's hidden below the buttons. It seems we have standard HP cooling solution with long thermal block and heat pipes to help the dissipation system. On the left we can see RAM memory which can be upgraded up to 32 gigs of RAM and on the right we can see the M2 drive. Most of the space of course takes up a battery. I got 7 hours of regular use, so that's just browsing the web and doing some music in the background. If you lower the screen brightness below 70% and disable some pre-installed apps, we can improve battery performance even further. For more demanding tasks like watching Netflix, YouTube and playing games, we'll of course reduce time to less than 3 hours. The factory charger does not take much space in the back and charges the laptop in less than 2 hours. It's time for some sound testing, so we move on to the speakers. As usually there are only two and they are located on the top. It's immediately clear that they were designed with simplicity in the mind, so I wasn't expecting too much from them. But they can still produce good mid-range sound, while bass remains humble. When it comes to high frequency, can even excel in some music videos. At normal listening volume levels they are good enough for watching YouTube. As always, if you want more it's still best to connect Bluetooth speaker. The HP G8 has its advantages and disadvantages. As far as design goes, the chassis feels durable, so I can say HP did a good job on build quality. The screen could have more colors, but it's still bright enough for indoor use and it has excellent sharpness. The processor has just the power it needs for all kind of web and office tasks and also for something more if you want edit graphics or play some games. Otherwise, compared to the other premium laptops, it's not missing much, at least if you don't need a powerful graphic card. Maybe the screen bezels could be more thinner and the basic warranty a little longer, so based on my experience with using it, I definitely recommend it to anyone who doesn't want to pay too much for a laptop, but wants a fast, cool and reliable processor with a sharp screen. Ok, hope you guys enjoyed this video, thumbs if you liked, subs if you love it and I will see you next time.